and it's Lori and welcome to the channel. So today's episode is going to be all about mask. I want to give you some of my tips and tricks after using mask in Lightroom for quite a long time now since it's been rolled out, at least the newest updates. So for some of you, this may be a refresher. You may learn a couple tricks you didn't know, but if you're a beginner, I hope that you find it really helpful. Now, I'm not going to go over every mask tool. I do have a full Lightroom course if you're interested, but I wanted to talk about some of my tried and true tips regarding masking. So let's jump in and get started. All right, so first and foremost, when you open up the mask panel, you have the option to create a new mask. And so you've got all the options available. Now, I would encourage you, the subject, sky, and background are those AI masks, and they are, they do come in handy, but I really encourage you to study and learn how to use the other masks that are available. So today, let's focus on using an object mask first. It's one of my absolute favorites. Now, when I use object mask, I like to use the square. You do have a brush option, but I find the square works really great for me. What we can do is come over and just put a square around the center of this flower. It is going to detect it. You can hover over it to see where it has masked. Now, if you ever want to see the overlay, you can click it. You can also change the color. So since this image, um, let's go ahead and do blue. It doesn't have a lot of blue in it. That way we can see the overlay. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and come down and make adjustments to this. We can also turn off our overlay at this point. So what I want to do here is just add a little pop of some exposure. I also maybe come down and add a little texture just to make that pop a little bit more. Now, here's where an extra fun trick comes in. What if I wanted to work on just the yellow tip of the center of this flower? So I have this mask that I already created. What I'm going to do is click these three buttons and I'm going to intersect the mask using color range. So it's like adding a second mask to your first one. So now I'm gonna come over and just select that kind of yellow um, orange color. There it is. So what this has done is it's selecting that color. You can see it in other parts of my image I'm going to actually refine it and let's make sure we show the overlay and you can see those dark areas that have been impacted, the little tips of the flowers. There we go. We've got all those tips selected. If you're ever not happy with the selection, you can just continue to take the little crossbars and click on the area. So now I'm going to turn off the overlay. And we're going to come down and we can actually now saturate just those tips of yellow. We could also desaturate them. We could also change the color. So if I wanted to make them green, if you wanted to make them red, whatever you want to do, you can alter and play with that because you have selected just that area of the center of the flower. So I think that's really fun. So intersect with is a great tip. It's where you're really adding those two masks in one. So up here at our menu in the upper right, you'll see we have our mask number two. We have where we did the object first, and then we had a color range that we added. I'll show you another example of that intersect with in just a second. All right, so for this image, let's try a couple other masks. So another favorite that I like to use is a linear gradient. Now linear gradients are nice because you can really control where it goes and it makes the colors or the light that you add very soft and gentle. So it's a gradient. It's going to get softer as you go. You can move this line around and place it however you want and you can also do them in different directions. So now that we've got this selected, we can do that show overlay. You can see how it's really dark and then it's going to get softer. You can also turn it so we can kind of manipulate it around. You have to get that little curve right there and you can turn it the way you want it. So now that we've got it, I'm going to turn off that overlay again. I'm going to come down to our temperature and I want to add some beautiful warmth. So just a little bit more warmth. I could also add some coolness, but I'm going to add a little warmth. 
And then I'm going to darken the exposure just to give it a little bit of some drama on this side. Now I'm going to come over, create another new mask. Let's do another linear gradient and come over this way. And I'm just going to reduce that exposure and darken it a little bit to bring in some emphasis to the center of our flower. All right, so that's a linear gradient. Now my next favorite is the radial. So radial gradient's been around a really long time, but I wanna show you something that's fun to do. So I'm gonna put that gradient right here. So now this whole area is what's masked, but what I wanna do is I actually want to invert it. So you have this invert option. So I'm going to invert the mask. Let's show that overlay, and now you'll see we have this whole outside area. Now what this allows me to do is really customize it so we can have it fall off gently and keep the center of our flower without the mask on it. What I'm gonna do here is actually reduce the exposure, which is giving me a vignette, but it's making it very soft so that as it comes in, it's fading gently. We can also even increase that. That's the benefit of using a radial gradient for a vignette versus one of the other gradients. All right, now we talked about color a little bit earlier, but I also wanna to talk to you about the color range. So let's grab this one, and I'm gonna come over and select this kind of bright blob right here. Now I could have done a remove on that, but I wanna show you the color range and you can see here where it has selected that color. Now let's turn on the overlay to make sure, oh, it selected a couple other spots too. Okay, so we wanna come down to the refine right here under color range and we can reduce that, but it's taking too much away from the area up here. So what I want to do is click those three dots I am going to intersect with, and I'm going to do select objects. And then I'm just gonna come over and select this area that I'm wanting. It's going to detect that. Now we have our overlay is just on this area and not on the rest of the image. So that's very similar to what I showed you earlier. Now we can come down and I'm gonna turn off the overlay and what I actually wanna do is unsaturate this to kind of reduce that color. And we also could see if we could change it maybe to a green. So that's kind of interesting, giving it just a hint of green. And we could try the colorize. Let's come over, try a little bit, maybe a yellow green that matches our image. And again, we could desaturate that. There we go. Now, you'll notice that our mask missed a little bit. So I'm gonna actually click the add, grab a brush, and come over and just brush it in. So if you ever make a mistake, that's all we have to do. We're just gonna kinda come in, blend that around. And then if you decide you need to subtract, subtract, grab your brush. You could also grab the eraser um, and we can just remove that where we have a little extra. Just gonna come in. I think that looks really nice and um, it looks like it matches the image and it's a lot less distracting than it was before. So that was several tools that we used within the one mask. So remember, we first did a color range and selected this area but then it, it picked up too much yellow in the rest of the image. So then we did an intersect with, click on these three dots, intersect with, and we did an objects. And that selected just our object. And then we even refined it more by adding and subtracting using the brush tool. All right, so, so many fun things that you can do with the mask options. There are just really, really endless. So let me show you one more with the luminance range. This is one that a lot of people don't use very often. So luminance is the brightness in your image or the opposite of that. So I'm gonna select this right here in kind of this bright area. I'm going to do show overlay and you can see where it is selecting all of those highlights. Now it's giving us this luminance map at the bottom. 
So I can actually come in and refine that, making it a little bit smaller as we go. Now what I can do is I'm going to turn off that overlay. We can come down and reduce the highlights in those areas. We could darken them just a little bit. Definitely reduce the highlights. We could even maybe modify using a tone curve. The only thing with luminance is you want to make sure you don't do too much or it can alter um, the colors and the detail. Saturate, maybe we actually um, darken it just a little bit. And that's where we've impacted with our luminance mask. So let's turn that on, off, off and on. You can just see it's very, very subtle, but it's just a way to control kind of the brightness in parts of your image. All right, so I hope that you will dig into these awesome math, math tools. I use them all the time for my editing, and I really hope that you'll try some of the things that we've covered today. They really can make a big difference in your image. And what I would encourage you to do is pick an image and play with it. Do a bunch of different masks, try different things, you really can't mess up. You can always backstep. You can always delete the mask. Just go right here and click delete and start over. Thanks so much for watching. Please take a minute to click like and subscribe. It definitely helps me out and encourages me to keep making more videos. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.